Hello viewers, this is Wag Darunao taking you through this tutorial for a level mathematics paper 2 and this story are going to talk about questions on linear motion in a straight line. So these questions are under mechanics and they are good for students in senior 5 and senior 6. Now these are the very questions I left in the previous video and I believe by now you have already tried them out and ready to mark yourself and check your progress. So we shall start with question 1 and question 1 says a stone is thrown vertically upwards with velocity 16 meters per second from a point h meters above the ground level. The stone hits the ground 4 seconds later. So they want you to calculate Roman 1 the value of h and Roman 2 the velocity of the stone as it hits the ground. So the best thing to do is to first make a sketch and this will be the sketch. Remember they told us that it is thrown upwards from a point which is h meters above the ground. So this is the, our capital h meters with a velocity of 16 meters per second. So this is the initial velocity. It will move upwards up to a point B where it is momentarily at rest and this will be the maximum height from the point of projection and that height will be called h max and after after that point it will now go downwards up to the ground which is point c and hits the ground with a velocity of v okay so now shall after now in this case shall now come and answer the question they wanted us to capture the value of h first So she said that for motion ABC, this is motion from here through B up to C, what happens? We know that we shall use the second equation of motion S being equal to UT minus a half GT squared. So S is the displacement and in this case our displacement is negative capital H because this capital H is below the point of projection. U is the initial velocity which is... 16 and our t is the time taken to move from a through b to c so we shall come and substitute those values so displacement is negative h like capital h like we said initial velocity is 16 and time was four seconds according to the question they told us that the stone hits the ground four seconds later so that is the total time taken which is four and g is the acceleration due to gravity in math paper 2 we use g as 9.8 t squared is for 4 squared now i think we realize that we have only one unknown which is capital h and when i make capital h the subject i'll come up with capital h being equal to 14.4 meters so basically that's what they wanted in part a now let's go to part b where they want the velocity with which the stone hits the ground. In other words, they want this value of V. So you shall now say that for motion AB, for motion AB from here to here, V squared, we shall use the third equation of motion. V is the final velocity, which is 0, U is the initial velocity, which is 16, and G is 9.8, S is H max. So when you substitute, I shall come up with that. And when I make h max the subject, I'll come up with my h max being equal to 13.0612 meters. Now that I've got my h max, I'll come and say that for motion BC from here up to here, we shall use the third equation still. But now realize that now it is plus because it is going downwards. V is the initial velocity, which is zero. Sorry, V is the final velocity, which is the velocity they want, and U is the initial velocity, which is 0. G is 9.8, and S is the displacement, and in this case, our displacement will be H max plus capital H. When I substitute, I'll come up with that. Remember, H max was 40, 640 over 49 plus capital H, which is 14.4, to give you our S. Then from there, I'll make 
v the subject and v will be equal to 23.2 meters per second so basically that's what they wanted in part b and now let's see how much can be awarded so for part a this m1 is for substitution here into the second equation of motion and this one would have has to be a1 so you change put here a1 so this a1 is for the value of h then b1 is for you to get the value of h max and this m1 is for substituting the third equation and this a1 is for the output which they want so basically that's how the five mass could come about now we shall go to question two and question 2 says, a stone is thrown vertically upwards with a velocity of 21 meters per second. Calculate Roman 1, the maximum height attained by the stone, and Roman 2, the time the stone takes to reach the maximum height. So just start with part A, where they want the maximum height taken attained by the stone so maximum height is our displacement and v is the final velocity at maximum point which is zero u is the initial velocity of projection which is 21 and g is 9.8 s is what they want so when i substitute i come up with that and when i make h max the subject i'll come up with my h max being equal to 22.25 meters so basically that's what they wanted in part a now shall go to part b where they want the time taken the time the stone takes to reach the maximum height so now we shall use the first equation of motion v is equal to u minus gt for upward motion and when i substitute i come up with this v is 0 u is 21 g is 9.8 i'll remain with one unknown which is t and when i make t the subject i'll come up with my t as 2.1429 seconds so basically that's what they wanted in part b and now we can let's see how mass can be awarded so m1 is for you to substitute in the third equation b1 is for you to simplify and a1 is for you to get the maximum height which they want for here for part b m1 is for substituting in the third first equation and a1 is for the for you to get the time which they wanted so basically that's how the five mass could come about in question two so now we shall go to question three question three says a ball is projected vertically upwards and it returns to its point of projection three seconds later find roman 1 the speed with which the ball was projected and roman 2 the greatest height reached so we shall start with part a where and we shall use the second equation of motion s is equal to ut minus a half g t remember the time was given as three so it is three g is known as 9.8 the constant so you realize that we have only one unknown which is u so when I make you the subject, I'll come up with you being equal to 14.7 meters per second. And that it was part A. Now part B, they want the greatest height reached. We know that at, at maximum height, final velocity is zero. So we shall use the third equation of motion. V is the final velocity, which is zero. U is the initial velocity, which is 14.7. And G is 9.8, the constant, so we can get s which is the maximum height and when i substitute and simplify i'll come up with my height being equal to 11.025 meters so basically that's what they wanted in part b and now let's see how much can be awarded So this M1 is for substituting in the second equation, M1 is for simplifying, and A1 is for the output, which is the velocity they want. For part B, M1 is for substitution, and A1 is for the output, which they 
one so basically that's how the five must could come about in this question so now shall go to question four question four says two cyclists a and b are 36 meters apart on a straight road cyclist b starts from rest with an acceleration of six meters per second squared why cyclist b sorry why cyclist a is in pursuit of b so a is running after b with velocity of 20 meters per second and acceleration of 4 meters per second squared then the question is find the times when a sorry find the you so saw okay find the times when a overtakes b so yeah the first thing to do is to make a sketch of what was given the of the information given so this is cyclist a this is cyclist b so cyclist a has moved a, a certain distance and is now at this point when cyclist sorry cyclist b is on which first starts and now at this point and when it is at this point cyclist a also starts moving so in other words cyclist a starts when he is at a certain distance behind cyclist b where to the cyclist b starts from rest and that's why this initial velocity is zero but with that acceleration of six meters per second squared so this is a1 which is six meters per second squared now cyclist b cyclist a starts with a velocity of 20 meters per second and with an acceleration of four meters per second squared so this as they move a point will be reached when cyclist a overtakes cyclist b and this is this point so what you have made, we have, we have said that let cyclist A move a distance X before he overtakes cyclist B and also, and that means that cyclist, cyclist B will have moved a distance X minus 36 because we are told that in the, in the, in the question that cyclist a and cyclist b are 36 meters apart meaning that this distance from here to here is 36 so if from here to here is x meters it implies that from here to here it, it will be maybe let me use a pencil so if from here to here is 36 and from here up to here is x it implies that this remaining one will be 36 sorry x minus 36 which is this okay so now that you have drawn a sketch we can now go and answer our questions so just say that for cyclist b we shall use this second equation of motion and in this case this is cyclist b s is x minus 36 and u is 0 and a is six so shall come and substitute those ones in the second equation of motion to come up with that equation and when you simplify we shall come up with x being equal to 36 plus 3t squared so that is cyclist b call it equation one now we shall go to cyclist a still use the second equation of motion for cyclist a s is x u is 20 and a is 4 so come and substitute and after that substituting you simplify and to get x being equal to 20t plus 20t squared so we have got two equations and two unknowns meaning we have to solve them simultaneously therefore you come and say that when i equate equation one to equation two remember all of them are xx so when i equate the two i come up with that and when i simplify I'll come up with a quadratic equation and when I use bulldozer method I'll come up with that and simplifying that will give me values of t as 18 and 2 seconds so these are the times when the cyclist when cyclist a overtakes cyclist b and now that you have got what they want let's see how maths can be 
awarded so b1 this b1 is for this equation equation one then b, another b1 is for equation two then m1 is for you to equate the two equations and another m1 is for you to solve the quadratic equation and a1 is for the output which are the two times both correct so basically that is how the five mass could come about okay so i believe you have marked yourself and checked your progress so what i'm going to do i'm going to leave you with another set of questions and this time they will come up they will come from a topic of composition and resolution of forces so this topic is still under mechanics So that brings us to the end of this lesson. Thank you for watching and be reminded that the solutions for the assignment left will be available in the next video. So if you have not yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below this video such that you can receive updates when the next video with the solutions has been uploaded. Otherwise, thank you for watching and if you know any student who is not yet on this platform, please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp so that we can all benefit as a family.